our greatest challenges uh, when it comes to posture and self-use is the fact that for a lot of humans, for a lot of us, the, the head is much too forward or a little too forward. Uh, and I'm talking about upright position where the head is not seated properly on top of the spine. Um, the, the, the problem with it is that the, the muscles of the neck, which could hold the head from, from going further forward, are not meant to work with weight. To, they're, not, they're not supposed to carry weight. The, those neck muscles are very delicate and they, um, they basically work in accordance with where the eyes want to go and they address the vestibular system. They're very accurate and delicate and specific, definitely not to hold the head from falling forward, okay? So what happens is that habitually, uh, we, those of us who have the head forward, and I'm one of them, um, feel, don't, don't even feel how much work they do in the upper thoracic and the back of the neck to simply hold the head from going further and further forward. And over time, the head does go further and further forward. And unfortunately, there is this um, mathematical fact where the, the head, which weighs about 10 pounds or so on the average, um, if it's an inch forward from where it's supposed to be on top of the spine, um, that weighs 10, 10 pounds more, right? If the head is two inches forward, it's 20 pounds more. So it can very quickly become two or three times the weight of the head the way we experience it in our musculature. Um, so that obviously will, will translate into a whole bunch of issues in the spine down below. Um, for a lot of us, there's the, the, the seventh cervical vertebra and the first thoracic vertebra are kind of protruding in the back a little bit. And for a lot of us, they protrude so much that it begins to create a little hump in the upper back. Um, the lesson that I'm going to teach you today is called the pecking lesson. And it's a very interesting, creative lesson. There's something very simple about it, and at the same time quite complex to figure out how to do. So please be, please be patient. Um, it is also a very profound lesson. And one of the most beautiful things about it is that instead of going into a corrective mode, of teaching how to bring your head back, it is very playful. It, it takes your head forward and back all the time. Sort of a little bit like a pecking motion of a, of a bird or, or a chick. Um, so this will, this investigation really, this lesson is about investigating the relationship of the head, the cervical spine, the spine of the neck, the thoracic spine, the spine of the ribs, and even the lumbar spine, the spine of the, the lower back. Um, so the whole spine and its relationship with the head. And as we play with orientation, changes of orientation in lying prone and supine and sitting this way and that way, um, we explore a lot of that relationship. And instead of walking out of the lesson with a concrete idea of where the head needs to be, um, what happens is, if you come back to this lesson and play with it occasionally, it will help you find its place. It will help your head find its place on top of the spine um, in, a, in a beautiful way. Um, let's get to it. I'm going to start with my legs long this time, although you're welcome to, of course, bend your knees and stay on your feet. And the first thing we're going to do for the pecking lesson is actually to do it in supine, meaning that we're going to go against gravity. So the first, first movement is quite challenging because we need to think of lifting the chin. And listen carefully, this is, this is really important. We bring the chin up to the ceiling vertically, right? And we're doing it so tiny that the, the back of the head is still resting on the floor. Do not lift the head from the floor. So as I'm beginning to explore this movement, I don't know if you're even able to see it. This is a very, very small movement where I'm beginning to experiment with how do I lift the chin purely vertical 
And when I do this purely, purely in a vertical way, the head rolls a little bit backwards, just a tiny, tiny bit backwards, not a lot. And while I'm doing it, my head is still touching the floor. In other words, I do not disconnect my head from the floor. It is the exact opposite of bringing the head up while bringing the chin to the chest, which looks like that. So this is not what we're doing. What we're doing is we're lifting the chin to the ceiling, right? And after we do a few of these movements, and initially you may have difficulty figuring out how the head can actually roll back a little bit as you're lifting the chin. How to do it so gentle, so effortless, that you're not going to be lifting the chin, keeping everything rigid and lifting it, but instead, as you're lifting it, the head would slightly roll backwards, right? To make the chin more vertical. Um, after doing it a few times, successfully or not so successfully, you want to give it up and roll over and lie on your front. And as you lie prone, you're coming into a sphinx position. The sphinx position has the upper arms from, shell, from shoulder to elbow directly vertical, so the elbows are directly under the shoulders, right? And the forearms are flat on the floor with open palms. And so right now we have gravity helping us to do the pecking action, right? We start by keeping the eyes at the horizon, not further up to shorten the back of the neck and not looking down at the floor, but instead eyes at the horizon. And while you keep your eyes at the horizon, you begin to make a small movement of pecking. Go very slow, very gentle to discover what this direction is all about because it is most likely for most of you who haven't done this before, quite foreign, quite strange. And you're pecking downwards and vertically upwards. All the movements are vertical. Thinking of the chin moving straight down. Make sure that you do not start doing this. This is looking down. This is not bringing the chin down. The chin will come down if your eyes will continue to be looking forward. Now, the next variation that is being created as you continue to do this and allowing for more movement to take place is that the entire spine is sinking down, not just the chin. This looks like that. And as my spine in its a whole, more of its length, the thoracic spine, the cervical spine, the head are all sinking simultaneously vertically downwards, the shoulder blades are staying behind and even actually coming together behind. And that is the movement that we want to encourage. So not just the chin, but the whole of the spine is sinking through. And it's also lifting up vertically beyond. So you can do it just with the whole spine moving up and down. You can do the chin moving up and down and you can start with the chin, continue with the spine, exaggerate it or make it smaller, depending on your comfort level, on your ability to, uh, where you're, to find where you're at as far as how familiar you are with the, with the movement and how, how far you, go, where you wanna go with it. You wanna break it up again, rest for a moment and back on your back in supine. And again, you can have your legs long or knees bent as you wish. It doesn't really matter. There's something about having your legs long if it's not too difficult for you that is rewarding because there's something regarding the, this arch in the back of in your lower back that is ever so slightly more clear now. And I'm gonna place my hands on my lower ribs for this next sequence of movements. And as I'm going to begin to experiment again with lifting the chin vertically to the ceiling to peck vertically up, 
and to again test and see if my head rolls a little bit back and maybe I will begin to feel more comfortable with almost disconnecting the back of the head from the floor and lifting the head a little bit further up in the air and if I'm able to do that I want to listen to what those ribs are doing right because these ribs are going to begin to lift as well right if you want to lift your chin most likely it will take the neck with it and a little bit of the upper thorax and you want to allow for that because that will that would make a big difference so as I'm beginning to lift a little bit more between my shoulders I'm beginning to realize that those lower ribs are allowed to stay down instead of lifting together with the top of the ribs the top of the ribs are lifting but the lower ribs are staying below and the lower back lo and behold is beginning to press into the floor as you're doing it it's recommended to use the breath and exhale every time that you lift and it's also recommended to really pace yourself this as I said before these movements are very unusual um, you don't want to start working powerfully through it all right once you find your your way through this it's possible to go much further it's, it's even possible for some people to lead with the chin and come all the way up to sitting which is quite intense and that's not something for for a person who's not used to these movements to play with quite yet um, just to help frame the lesson as a whole uh, please keep in mind that it's also possible to do this movement in sitting and this is another important orientation we play with and we're doing it in two slightly different orientations we sit and lean back on our hands right in which case the chin is aimed a little bit in a diagonal way upwards and then you take the chin that way a few times and the other one is sitting let's say cross-legged with a more rounded back back and allowing for the chin to to lengthen downwards in this direction in a in a in a diagonal this direction um, but this is the gist of the lesson and uh, and even for those two orientations that I was covering in this video it's still a lot to work with and if you pace yourself and come back to it you will become more and more familiar with these directions with these movements and you will begin to feel the benefit from it um, please uh, feel free to send questions and and comments and uh, and I will uh, See you next time. Take care.